I see six o'clock. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. It's the regular select board meeting. Thursday, February 1st. Welcome to February, everyone. Um, uh, da, 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 da. First thing is set the just agenda. Maybe have any changes? Not on my end. Great. All right, hearing none, communication from the audience. Bill, are you communicating from the audience? Or are you here for <coughs> item on our agenda? I'm here to keep an eye on the EWP just as a citizen yep. and as a resident. Great. Um, Sounds good. If you want any more resources, I have a new resource. So we were talking about that on item one, right? Yeah. So I have um, email from the engineer that reduced the cost at 609. But let's, if you're here for that, let's wait hold that off okay. until we get to item one. Thank you. All right. Next is select board to approve minutes from uh, last time, which was January 18th. I can motion to approve the regular select board meeting minutes on January 18th. Second. Any uh, comments, questions on the um, minutes? It was here, so. Oh. oh, that's right, you missed it. I missed the meeting uh, only for 10 years. Yes. Sorry, I just realized just that there was one letter missing in Alex Jones. Which one Alex Jump, Yep. Oh, like okay. I see it. Yeah. Do you, okay, so you are you moving that we approve the minutes with that one change? Yes. All right. And I second that. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We have, oh, we have an abstention over there from well, the absent one. Do I actually have to abstain or? I, I mean, I know. I approve. It's all up to you, Sherry. It's fine. Say aye. You say aye. All right, so motion passes. Thank you. Um, next is town manager report given by Mr. Hobson. So um, we had a funding meeting, funders meeting today about moving the fire station. So we got um, some guidance on how to proceed with that, and it's similar to the wastewater plant. So it's let FEMA do their thing and the money that we get back to fix the plant, we can hold off and use, or the fire station we can hold off and potentially use in a, um, in a move for the, for the project. But that's, I, I question that yeah. because we have to spend the money to get the money back. Right. So um, I have to have the conversation with our PDMG, which we just got assigned a new one which you know, he's getting up to speed. Um, we got our first debris project obligated. So basically that's been checked off and we should be getting funds for that. We have the next two that are really close are the temporary bridges. Um, I need to get permits from the Army Corps of Engineer and the State River Corridor folks, which I spoke with both of them and they know the circumstances they're doing this for many communities, so it's basically send them the information. The Fisher Folly Bridge is not a big deal because we didn't work in the river. The Tucker Brook Bridge, um, we've got to do some measurements and some do additional documentation for. Tom's working on that. I talked to him today about that. Um, we had a meeting with the EWP program. Um, Eric, you were on that and no town that he knows of other than one small project has ever um, used public funds for the matches um, and we can move forward with the three projects okay we're going we'll right into item one here oh yeah that's right let's let's wait <laughs> i have that in here um i got an assessment <coughs> from i got a um, appraisal from matt on that property down there um, it's he I can share it with you he just sent it to me tonight um, he used two parking lots that had sold in St. Jay and then one other small parking lot for for comps um, oh this is for the that parking lot were they parking lots that had previously had buildings on them uh, I'm not entirely sure because it seems like there'd be some infrastructure there now or no? I think I that know. whatever was there was it's gone. Was filled in. Oh. Um, okay. I mean, there's probably a sewer pipe in there somewhere. Yeah. But 
maybe not. Um, and oh, on the fire department, we talked with um, community facilities, and then there's a, uh, the federal government through community facilities might be um, approving a disaster supplement. That's kind of what uh, people are banking on right now. And as morbid as this sounds, um, it's good that we had the Maui fires because they're gonna do a disaster supplement and it, it covers all the, desert, all the FEMA disasters in the year. So, yeah. Is this moving at a federal, this, yeah. Like, yeah. federal level? Yeah. Federal and pace. so I not like I got a didn't get the best feeling from our our partners in the federal side of things <coughs> for future funding. Oh. I think everybody's in a holding pattern right now. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things that are happening sub um, what it would they what is the term they use? Like Underground, subterranean, subterranean, Sub subterranean, yeah. uh, which is <laughs> under skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but just it's kind of we're in a holding pattern. And it's a, an election year, and the House and Senate aren't really focused on the Northeast. Yeah, they haven't even really passed the budget, have they? Right. Yeah. Well, they're they're going from like month to month. Though. Right. Yeah. So there's that. So if we're, and then they, they talked about the bond bank and low interest loans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wasn't there, wasn't there uh, some sort of update with the MTAP Hudson sent? That's, they mentioned that, that the MTAP, that's what we're using. And that's with NBDA. Right. And that's gonna be, that's going to be good yeah. for that program. Is going to be good for um, the design and scoping. Right. And that's for wastewater. That's for moving, no, moving the fire station. Yeah. the The wastewater plant is really its own beast, and that's still there's still a lot of question marks there. Um, but now that we have our Albert and Elliot doing that study, then they'll be able to get a substantial damage determination, which is what we're waiting for. If it's over 51%, that's the magic number um, to be able to move. And I think that back to the fire station, the 51% substantial damage is like the magic number. Mm. So then that money gets, we can put in a case that, hey, this is flooded a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to pay to repair this building. If it's substantially damaged, and they'll they'll say either flood proof it or prove it. Okay. And kind of moving it ties into feasibility for yeah. Road. Yep. And they're aware of all that. Um, Monday night, I went to a heart of rescue squad meeting, and basically continued the conversation. They want to be a part of the the planning, but maybe not necessarily putting their building in our buildings. Um, but basically the planning for the campus. Great. Yeah. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for now. Great. I feel a little scattered. That's OK. There's a lot going on. Yeah. 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 All right. Do you want to? Um, Tom Fadden's not here. Do you want to tell us anything about roads or anything? Or um, they're just they're they caught up on some maintenance. This the slow time with uh, with no snow and you know the minor salt, a little bit of salting, but um, they just caught up caught up on some maintenance. Tom had an electrical issue on his truck that he fixed. Um, Edward's been down to the plant. Uh, we had a. Um, a cat guy come and look at the generator down there. It didn't give us the best prognosis on it in terms of like moving forward. Um, they want to take the generator head off, which I don't know if we need to do. Um, the generator to go wet. Yeah, they want to take separate it from the motor mm -hmm. and like clean it and, and re-dip it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we're gonna, for, for about 
I think it was like thirty thousand dollars. So um, would FEMA cover that? They would, but if we're going to be elevating the plan, like that's an again, that's another. Does it put us towards our fifty-one percent? That that is a hard part in the plan. That's yeah. what I would say. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So we talked to them about a portable generator, um, and then just with the road crew, um, they fixed a water leak down on Buffalo Street, down in the old lobby yard. I don't know if they did that before the last meeting. I don't think I don't think they did. Yeah. So they had a big water leak down there. They did. Uh, they did some pothole work on that yep. road. And here too. Yeah. Some coal patch stuff. All right. Yeah. Sounds Do we good. know if he's ordered the crosswalk paint for the I, I new don't, style of I don't, but I'll, I'll confirm that. <clears throat> All right. Um, thank you. Yep. Next up, Carter Police Department report. So we got our snow wheel back. Uh, so now we're back up to full strength. We don't have any trails to <laughs> without the snow. So uh, taking the advice of Wiz, we did put a uh, speed sign up uh, one of our battery operated ones that shows your speed just to kind of control the speed coming through. Uh, the town was great putting uh, uh, the post up for us and now I've got a speed sign we can flip it both ways uh, and get traffic uh, one way or another. <clears throat> so that's good. Thank you. The uh, main thing I wanted to talk about is I've interviewed two people uh, for positions at the Harvard Police Department. Uh, there is an, there's an academy that starts in February where you can't get them in Feb, you know, it's too late to get them into that, that class. Uh, the next full-time class is in August. Um, so what we've discussed with them is the possibility of going through the part-time academy. Uh, there is one that starts in March. Uh, so what we would do, the plan would be to put them through the part-time academy, start working through the field training process, and then uh, kind of gauge where they're at and give them a little bit of experience before they actually go into the academy in August. Um, I think, you know, one person uh, is, I say older, but uh, is uh, 40s, the other person is younger, so early 20s. Um, so we got a mix of both. I think they're, I think they're both going to be really good, a good asset to the town. Um, so that's kind of my plan. I kind of need to just run that by the board and make sure that you guys are good with that plan going through with that. So the way that that impacts the us and I mean, we kind of, what, what do we do? We, our mean, our mean, Purview is the budget and the town manager. So, I guess in that regard, how does that hit our budget? Explain it to us a little bit. Well, I think we're down right now uh, on part timers. We, we've lost uh, full timer as well. So, we're going to be within the budget with that. The, uh, the drawback to this is we're going to have people on the payroll that are not really going to be. Uh, good to us until after they're out of the full-time academy. So they'll have to be with somebody the entire time while they're in the part-time. There's a field training process, but there's also, it's a two-week part-time academy, but then there's other classes they have to take after that. So if they're going to go to the full-time academy, it doesn't make sense to send them to those classes and then have them get it later. Um, and those classes are spread out throughout the year, too. So it, it, it takes a long time to get somebody part-time certified. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the balance of where I'm going to be at. So we'll be within the budget with that. We'll start them out part-time, working a couple days a week with somebody else. Do we pay for the academy? Uh, we pay for the full-time academy. Mm -hmm. Generally, we don't pay for the part-time academy. Well, we pay their salaries during the full-time academy. We don't okay. pay for the certification. Right. The academy doesn't okay. cost anything. It doesn't. No. It's provided by the state. Yeah. Right. It's uh, what <clears throat> what the goal of the academy is. They utilize uh, law enforcement officers uh, to teach the academy. Mm -hmm. So somebody from the town of Hardwick would be down there teaching. Uh, so that's our contribution okay. to them. 
uh, we haven't been down there to the academy. We did have, Andrew did go down a couple times and helped out with a couple classes uh, after he was certified. But, uh, you know, we need to take a little bit more of an active role in that. Uh, but <clears throat> And the reason that you would recommend hiring people that we need to train is because we're not getting applica applications from folks who are fully certified. Right. And actually our, our applications for even, we didn't get that many for non-certified, or non-certified people. Um, so. so basically your recommendation is you found a couple people that you think are good, it would be an asset to the town, we invest in them, and, we, and we've done this in the past, Harvard has done this for years and years. Right. Um, That's our MO. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I guess what I'm asking the town this time is that uh, we actually give them a salary while they're at the training salary while they're in the part-time class. That's something that's going as to be- As a part-time employee. As a part-time employee. Mm -hmm. And that's within your budget? That's within the budget. I think it's fair at this point, you know, we're yeah. asking yeah. two weeks out to- I think it makes sense. Okay. So we still have to do the same. I still have to have the, like, do the official hire through the board, right? We have to do the hiring be a point officer. Once, 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 yeah. once yeah. they're a law enforcement officer, and that's okay. the catch here is they're okay. not technically law enforcement officers. So basically, yet. we wouldn't be appointing these until, until after they're certified. Right. Okay. Right. We'll wait until they're actually certified. And then As a pedagogical issue, am I right in thinking that if they've been to part time academy, they will be better positioned to understand what's mm -hmm. going on in full-time academy? That they will be better students yes. in full-time academy? Yes. That's, that's the thought process, is to give them that part-time academy um, so that they, you know, it's just two weeks, and then put them out on the road to where they start seeing what's happening and how we work, and then when you go to the full-time academy, it gives you a little bit more of an edge. Much better context. It's really like the cat. It should we should say it, the level like the level two academy. Yes. The part time throws people off. It's, right. It's, it's a certification, so it's this level is a, two certification, and then the full time is level three certification. So they'll be, you know, level two certified through that. Well, they won't be level two certified. So this is a level one, level two. The two week is a level one, level two. Yeah. Academy, and then you have to take the courses after that right. okay. to get you to be either level one or level two. So, uh, and, and still, they will be they will be primed to be much better at full time than they would be without this this level one and two experience. Yes, and it may also, um, if it doesn't, it's if it's not a good fit for them, we'll, we'll, know, before, we'll know before we invest yeah. in them for yeah for another. Year. Seems like a reasonable way to proceed. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess. Do you need a motion, or are you no. just? I don't think I need a just motion. I just, <clears throat> just letting support. you know. Yeah, letting you know. Um, You've got our support. Okay. <laughs> All right. And we're we're getting through the process right now. Obviously, you know, there's background, finishing that up. They've got to do polygraph, medical, and we've got to get all that stuff in mm -hmm. before they go to the academy. Conservation, or no, service, not yeah. resource conservation, and RCF. And so this is the grant we talked about last time. Right. And they had looked at Hardwick and found three places along the river where the bank could be armored to protect the property. Man-made structures. Yeah. In imminent peril of washing down the river. Yeah. Um, so this is really an effort for the town to keep proper to keep uh, properties on the grant list, mm -hmm. so we don't have to buy them out in the future. Yeah. Um, and so we met with them. 
and there's really uh, we got one uh, the Vermont the relief what was the Vermont yeah. all these acronyms yeah. are making my head spin but there's a state agency that could be approached for help with the match right yeah the flood relief fund um, and then in the in according to one of the the people that work in NRCS, the town has never been the fiscal. They've been the the grant manager, and they've um, sponsored the projects, but they've never used. They haven't used their town money for the matches. Um, if we reach a certain threshold statewide for damage, which we're getting to that point, the the percentage goes from 75% to 90%. So that would make our the, the sponsor portion less for the, pro the project, and um, which would be less of a burden on the, the landowner. Um, so it would really be up to the landowner to come up with the, the match money. And so I joined that call. Yeah. And the other thing, the, the big takeaway I got from it was that there's really no downside to us entering into the grant agreement because it doesn't it doesn't bind us to doing the work at all. Right. It just it just is like us accepting their proposal. And he said it really the only time. Like at any point, we could drop out up to the point that we engaged and started on construction. Correct. So even if we, he said you could even do the engineering, get that hired out and do it, and then and then back out and then say, oh, that that's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And could you also? So we're looking at three properties. Could only two of those properties yep. do it? And yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's not binding those landowners nope. to anything. Nope. Um, it's just giving them a potential opportunity. Keeps the door open. Yeah. Yep. And it covers the cost of engineering and the oh, the brunt of the project. Yeah. So we just, and we, don't we have at least one landowner who's yes. wanting to participate in this way? So yes. it seems like there's not a downside to us. In, um, accepting the grant agreement. Right. And if um, we have somebody who wants to use it, it's possible all three will want to use it. Yep. And we had, there, there was a certified letter that was sent, although I, I thought the certified letter was sent in December. Um, Michael confirmed with me that it was sent in January, late January, so we have until like the end of March to decide and get the grant application in. So we're not pushing up against any hard deadlines. But it seems like we should do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I mean, it seems like there's advantages too to just saying let's do it. So yeah. Way, so we can. Yes. Carry on. Forward, carry on. Yeah. Right? yeah. <clears throat> Bill has. Bill. Um, my correspondence reduced the cost at six oh nine. Right now it's down to eighty one four, and uh, cost sharing is twenty thousand three hundred fifty one dollars. So just to, you know, I think before we get down the road of individual project costs, what we heard on this call was that um, we ought to accept the full amount because then I agree with that. I, all I those funds get obligated and if one project gets less expensive, another project might get more expensive and so we would have <coughs> access to the full amount. But, uh, to finish my comment, mm -hmm. I paused. Um, I believe the work at 609 will protect the state group 15 dramatically mm -hmm. because otherwise that baby's headed right there mm -hmm. and this will this will fully go down to the island which will keep that river north of the island when it goes wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure that, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that V-Trans has been part of this conversation. No, no, I'm just talking about added value to the town. Because the loss of Route 15, we experienced, mm -hmm. and it was pretty serious. Uh, did you just join us? Should we just recap what we said? Hey, Danny. Because he had some questions about this. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, so we're, we're going to, since you're just joining, can you hear me okay? Yes. Amazing. So yes. we're on item one, which is the um, EWP program, the, the one where NRCS uh, gives us money to protect uh, New River Bank um, armoring. And what we've just been discussing, uh, Opie and I joined a call with Tracy and his name is Mike. Michael Point. Michael um, from NRCS to this week. And what we learned is that there's really no downside to us uh, accepting this grant agreement because accepting it does not commit us to doing any of the work. It just it just puts uh, it puts the funds uh, it commits the funds to us should should the individual landowners choose to um, provide the match to do the projects and so. We could do, you know, even if just one landowner wanted to do it, then one could do it. That would be fine. The others could not. They could all do it. Um, so anyway, it just seems like there's no, there's no downside to us accepting the the grant. Well, that's great. I would I would support moving ahead as long as there's no commitment for. You know, you know where my deal is. I don't want Bill to pay for Bob's land, that's all. So, or Bob to pay for Bill's land, either way. Um, so, that's all I really, you know, if we can figure out how to put something in place, I, I support that, for sure. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. So, yep. I don't know, we could um, have, have a motion to... Do you need to, uh, well, so there, before before we need a motion, I'd like to know what we're going to do. You know what I mean? Have a little more, uh, or are we just going to have a general motion for Opie to continue to investigate? <clears throat> no, I was going to suggest that we could have a motion for Opie to for the town manager to sign the grant agreement, but all right, because then I mean, I'd like to see the grant agreement. Would you would like to? Yep. To see it writing that we're sure. not on the hook? Yeah, we have, uh, Opie just reported too that we actually have longer than we thought even to get the grant agreement in, so we can do that next time. That's fine. It's, I think it's a grant, just a grant application. Oh, right. They've done it's all the, the application. They just did all the applications yeah. for us. And it's like the next step is are we going to, are we going to actually enroll in the program? And if we're going to do it, then then the grant application. I think the grant agreement will come after. I think it's the application they're waiting on. Okay. So yeah, we can we can wait till next time. But it, it just is encouraging that. Oh uh, yeah. Whatever. As long as we know what we're signing, that's all. Yep. Yeah. We can that's do. all that is. We totally. Oh, do. Don't we? Yeah. So it's good. So it's all good. The program sounds good. Sounds flexible. Um. Yeah. So you want a motion that well, yeah, or, yeah, to that we authorize the town manager to sign this grant, grant application. application to move forward. Move forward. Yeah. Second. Okay, so that's great. I have a motion to to have the town manager sign the green application. Um, I thought we had seen that last time. We saw the first meeting. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. I. Oh. Yes. That, that was just like the basic. That was like just the mm -hmm. projects. Yeah. What the cost was, what the, the sponsor's share was. And. Yeah. Basic information. Yeah. I haven't seen any terms. Okay. I assume we get that after we. So is it premature then? Take the application. We have to submit the application. I don't think we so. We have to submit the application. Yeah. All right. So motion on the table. Have the account manager sign the application. NRCS. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's everyone. So motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for following up and keeping us. Did you want to say something? Though? Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. That's how Quakers say thank you. Okay, good.
Uh, item two, select board to choose a date and time for the public informational meeting prior to town meeting. It has to be after February 24th. So, we'll have a little calendar thing up. There. I would like to propose either the 28th or 29th at 5 p.m. preferably. Uh, yep. How about the Thursday, just because yeah, that's the Thursday? The Thursday, because we usually meet on Thursday. Leap yeah. day. And leap day. <laughs> and we want to meet at, you, you want to do it at 5? Yes, if we can, on the book days at 5, so maybe the 29th, that's the Thursday. Yeah. yeah. We don't get this. Is that good? So, that, and it's basically just the usual, like, the informational meeting going over the budget before the town meeting because of the warrant. We have to do that, so. Yeah. Should be relatively quick, maybe half an hour. I'm sure I, we don't usually have a great audience or a large audience, is what I mean. But yeah, yeah, small, yes, will it be televised? Probably, could we ask, but I think we could ask. Yes, That's a great idea. we will ask. We'll How's that? I just answered because I think yeah. other people won't be here, yeah, but they might tune in. Yep. So we'll ask HCPB about televising that. Yes. Okay. Cool. I'll do that then. Awesome. So there we so go. So 29th, February 29th at 5 p.m. I will get that posted. Great. With a couple, I'll get it posted like a week before, so yeah. Right. <laughs> do we need a motion? No. Okay. Um, I second. Second. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, select board reports. The downtown partnership has hired our staff person, Yay. Jan Mueller. He started, he's talking to people downtown. It's all good. Good. I saw him walking today. Mm -hmm. Walking and talking. Yep. It's good. The Gazette continues to come out every week, which feels like a minor miracle mm -hmm. every Wednesday when it shows up. Yeah, it's great. We're getting our act together. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, uh, new business or old business? I just had a quick question about town meeting. Yes. So we talked at our last, after our last town meeting about um, some things that we could do differently. And I think Rose and mm -hmm. there were a few other people who were going to come up with some things. I, I was a part of that group. But it's coming around again. So I don't know if we want to talk about it at our next meeting, like if we're nervous to talk about like doing a dinner or like having a, mm -hmm. making it a little. Rose received grant funding for a pre-town meeting program at the Civic. I don't know what the details were, but I know that, um, you mean for last year or for this year? For this year. Oh, um, mm -hmm. sort of, I think the idea was an educational, explain what town meeting is for people who are not entirely comfortable with the idea and you know, just just a little bit of history and civics and food. I know they're they were doing gonna do mock town meetings at a couple of the schools. They're oh, still working on that. Um, I can ask we have a nonprofit Meeting local nonprofit meeting tomorrow down there at noon. The library, Northeast Kingdom Human Services, um, the food pantry. So I'll mention it. Okay. Awesome. Any other new business, old business? Do we have to open up the um, traffic ordinance or whatever in order to just buy some parking, no overnight parking signs and stuff for the trailhead? Or the so. Depot Street. Okay. Then I'll just stop, start working on making those requests. Okay. I have one small new business, please. Yeah. Okay, so um, our the town's deferred comp plan, which is to say Vermont, recently changed from Prudential to Empower. So really the only change for us is that we um it's kind of finally made the migration after a year and a half and so the newest thing is that we 
have to submit our employees' contributions um, that we take out of their payroll via ACH or wire. We cannot send a check anymore. So basically what has happened is in order for me to do that, um, we have to have the bank turn on the ACH feature to our main operating account in order to make this payment. Um, it is still considered an electronic payment. We are making electronic payments now. I've reviewed our policy for internal controls, and really nothing would be different. Um, but Tanya, I really wanted um, you guys to be aware that we are going to activate this ACH feature on our operating account and sort of have your blessing on it. Um, she would feel more comfortable that you knew about this. But the plan really is only to use it. We, we do use direct deposit for payroll, but they, we're going to only use this to pay that one vendor, not a bunch of vendors. We'll continue with our normal procedures. But that's, that's, she just wanted you to be aware and kind of have your blessing. Yep. Yeah. And Sherry will still review yeah. stuff. So. Correct. Yeah. So none, none of our processes are going to change. We are paying some stuff electronically now, like, you know, Comcast and little things like that. But um, and it will be reviewed the same exact way. But it's just they have to turn that on in order for me to be able to spend it. And it's literally employee deductions. That sit in a withholding account until we remit them. So it's it's pretty pretty low risk because that's really all we're gonna be doing. Okay. Yeah, I think that's yeah. everybody looks like they're nodding. We get Danny saying no. <laughs> He's not nodding. Just tell her no. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're, being, yeah. you're being a pain. I can mute him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just want, so Casey, you're doing payroll now? Yeah. Uh, temporarily while the end is out. Have, have we explored, um, you know, I'm just wondering if payroll is in this day and age a great use of staff time or have we explored um, maybe using a, a service. Pay, you know, payroll service like that a lot of people use? Well, we did look at it a while ago. Um, but I think um, at that time it was pretty expensive. Like if we're gonna have, like we can't really have like a, a dedicated person and hire out our payroll. So right. we have to be, I was trying to figure that out. Um, I mean, that, that position, that's a position. All right. it's, part, it's part of the, her job, not her entire job. Right. So if we do that, then we would have to do away with it. Basically she's our HR department, right? Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I get it. So it's yeah, we did we did look at a payroll company a while ago. We had a couple meetings with them, did a demo with them. But when we found out the cost, it was kind of like, almost like the cost of a person. So it was kind of like, yeah, we, we can't, yeah. But I, not only the cost, the amount of bitching I hear and whining from the town guys about their checks and their time and how complicated it is. I don't think we would want that to be external. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? I know that they, I know I hear often about, you know, the way that their time works is complex with snow and time and comp time and this time. And then they're often talking about their interactions with Amanda. So you wouldn't want that to be in Indonesia somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Nope. <laughs> we, we need our payroll person to speak English. Okay. Or gibberish in the case of a couple of them. But. Uh, all right. Well, thanks. Thanks for the discussion. I just had that to ask a question. Uh, all right. Anything else? Let's adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Feel better, Casey. Thanks. Have a good night. You too.